Hello, I'm Jonathan Dunsky, author of The Adam Lapid Mysteries. On this channel, I often talk about crime fiction and thrillers that I read and enjoyed. And today I'd like to tell you about March Violets by Philip Kerr. March Violets is book one of the Bernie Gunther series. Bernie Gunther is a German private investigator who, at least in the beginning of the series, is working in 1930s Berlin in Nazi Germany. This book and this series uh, is one that is uh, highly loved and admired by my own readers and many of them have recommended that I read it as well. I believe that they, they enjoy it so much uh, because both uh, the Bernie Gunther series and my own series take place at roughly the same time. Um, my series, the Adam Lapid series, takes place in the 1940s and 50s, in, mostly in Israel, while, as I said, the Bernie Gunther series at least begins in Nazi Germany in the 1930s, and both series um, deal with either the Second World War or the Holocaust or the, the rule of the Nazis, and the repercussions and the effects of that, of that country of Nazi Germany and the atrocities that it committed. Um, I will also say that this is uh, the Bernie Gunther series is a highly acclaimed series of historical mysteries that numbers more than 10 novels. The author, Philip Kerr, has passed away, I believe, a few years ago, but the series continues to be popular and recommended by many. And book one, March Violets, can be bought either separately or as part of a, a box set, a trilogy of the first three novels. And I'll leave a link in the description to both the, uh, the single book and the box set so you can pick up uh, whichever one you feel is right for you. So... Before I begin telling you about the story, let me just say a few words about the title, March Violets. The title refers to uh, Germans who sort of jumped on the bandwagon, joined the Nazi party once it assumed power, uh, total power, in March 1933. So they're considered, they're called in the book, March Violets. And the book is set in 1936, right before and during the 1936 Olympic Games that took place in Berlin. And, as I said, Bernie Gunther is a private investigator who used to be uh, a policeman in Berlin, um, but then he was let go or sort of driven out when the Nazis took power and began purging basically the entire civil service of anyone who they suspected of not being completely loyal to the Nazis, to Adolf Hitler. And it was one of the steps that they took to consolidate power and achieve complete control over uh, the German civil service, the German economy, and the military as well. So Bernie Gunther is not a fan of the Nazis. He did not vote for them. He used to be a highly qualified and, uh, and, a, and respected police officer, and he now works as a private investigator. He, has, he also served in the uh, First World War, and he is a widower. He was married for a short time, but his wife died a few years before the book takes place. So in this book, uh, Bernie Gunther is hired by a wealthy industrialist who wants him to, um, to investigate the death by fire, or, or sorry, the death by shooting of his daughter and son-in-law. They were shot in their home, and then the killer set their home on fire. And in addition to that, they had a, a safe in their home, and in that safe, was a, a piece of jewelry, a quite expensive piece of jewelry that this industrialist has given his daughter, had given his daughter, and 
it has disappeared, the, the safe was found open and empty, and he wants that back. And the reason why he wants it back is because of, of, of a law in Nazi Germany that um, if someone did not have a will, all their property became property of the German Reich. And what happened is, is that his daughter was married to a, a Nazi official, and this Nazi official had no will, so supposedly her property, this piece of jewelry being a part of it, was supposed to go to him because he had no will. It would then go to the Reich, and this wealthy industrialist wants that piece of jewelry back because it has a lot of emotional value apart from its monetary value. So, um, Bernie begins uh, investigating this case, and he begins by visiting the crime scene and then searching for the jewelry among uh, known fences and people who are now acquiring uh, jewelry and in Berlin, in Germany, because uh, as one of, the, one of the effects of the Nazi rule is that uh, there was a, a great deal of pressure and a lot of, of course, uh, repression of German Jews. One of the, part, part of the things that happened to German Jews is that they stopped being citizens of the Reich, that they were kicked out of various uh, occupations, and basically they were driven out of the workforce. And a lot of them found themselves uh, unable to support themselves uh, without selling uh, whatever property they had, including jewelry. And, and there are some heartbreaking scenes in which uh, Bernie visits uh, jewelry stores and there's a line of Jews waiting to uh, sell their jewelry and the German uh, store owners, the German buyers, uh, basically uh, give them very little because they know that the Jews have to uh, have money, they have to sell their jewelry, so they take advantage of them quite viciously. This is just one of the sort of elements that um, give you a, a vivid picture of what life was like in Nazi Germany. And the book is full of historical references, historical details. And it seems like uh, the author had intimate and in-depth knowledge of how Berlin looked at the time, how things operated in, in, the, in that city under Nazi rule. It's quite amazing the level and the level of detail, the historical detail that he presents in the book, and he does so beautifully. So you can see, you know, he, he knows where certain stores were located, where certain city parks were located, hotels, uh, cultural um, uh, buildings, and then the, the newspapers, the, basically the, the entire... Uh, way in which that city operated and I quite admire that that he was able to present such a detailed picture and and do so without bogging the story down I'll just give you a few more interesting historical details just to give you a taste of what I'm what I'm talking about um, he, in the book Bernie visits various uh, German uh, businesses and uh, one of the things that Germans did at the time was uh, include the word German in their job title, in their job description. So uh, uh, a law firm became a German law firm just to indicate that the person running it or the people working in it were not Jewish. They were proper Aryan Germans. Uh, so just to give you you know, this is just something that struck me as something very, uh, very interesting and sort of gave, gave me the sense of what life was like in that racist, totalitarian society. Um, of course, he, he also describes um, people giving the uh, uh, Nazi salute, sort of soldiers marching in the street. Everyone has, everyone ha uh, have to, uh, has to stop and you know, raised her hand in the Hitler salute. 
when uh, Joseph Goebbels uh, gives a speech on the radio, you're supposed to listen. It's a party. Uh, it's a German, it's a Nazi party uh, radio broadcast and everyone is supposed to listen to it. And there are people who may, inspectors who may go, go into businesses and into or knock on apartment doors and make sure that you're listening to the, uh, to the radio broadcast, to the, that propaganda. And people have uh, photographs of uh, Adolf Hitler on the walls of their homes and their businesses. And there's, there, there is also just uh, this layer of fear covering everyone that you can at any moment be sort of grabbed off the street by the police, by the Gestapo and sent to a concentration camp. At that time, concentration camps uh, were not the things that we often think about when we think of the Holocaust and what happened afterward. We're talking about 1936, before the Second World War. Uh, the concentration camps were filled not just with Jews, but with just people who were considered enemies of the Nazi party, enemies of the Third Reich. So communists, socialists, liberals, everyone who did not toe the party line. And of course, this being a dictatorship, you cannot, you cannot appeal to a court of law because the law was whatever Adolf Hitler decided it was. And so in this, uh, and one of the other things that uh, Bernie talks about in the book is that a lot of people tend to just disappear. Uh, sometimes they're found dead in a canal somewhere. Sometimes they're sent to a concentration camp without inf anyone informing their family. A lot of Jewish people uh, are disappearing this way. This is what happens when a, when a country descends into barbarism and dictatorship and some of Bernie's uh, clients many of his clients are in fact Jewish who are, who are hiring him to find out what happened to their loved ones um, so Bernie begins digging into into this case into this uh, murder and the disappearance of this piece of jewelry and he becomes involved uh, in a sort of conspiracy within the bureaucracy of the Third Reich, and he gets to meet a number of uh, historical figures of higher-ups um, in the Nazi party, among them Hermann Goering, just as one example. Um, and he has to sort of uh, he has to sort of find his way to the solution of the mystery without angering anyone in in power, because that may result in him being just killed or imprisoned. Now, I read this book a number of years ago, and I remember not liking it very much. And then I got my hands on the box set of the uh, three uh, first novels in the series of the trilogy. And, and I decided to give it another read, especially because many of my own readers, as I said, love the series. And this time I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I think that what sort of bothered me in, the, in my initial reading was that Bernie Gunther is, is sort of a wisecracking detective and, and it seemed a bit off to me uh, given, the, given the setting, the very serious and somber setting of Nazi Germany. But as I read it, when I read it the second time just recently, it did not disturb me at all. I found it to be somewhat of a, I think, a coping mechanism of Bernie Gunther as he sees his country changing around him as he sees madmen assume power and have total power and as he worries about where his country may be heading. And so I think that his sort of dry cynic humor is part of the way in which uh, Bernie deals with this, with this tragic reality. The book um, has a lot of sort of noirish and hard-boiled slang in it, which I found to be quite charming, but it, it may take you a bit uh, to, you know, to understand all the various terms of slang. So, for instance, police officers are bulls, uh, handguns are lighters, prostitutes are snappers, and there are other uh, sort of slangish and uh, noirish terms 
that I found to be quite charming. The story is quite thrilling, it's written beautifully, and you become immersed in that place and in that time for good and for bad, and you see people who are totally evil, you see people who are good and just trying to get by, and you see the great sort of majority in the middle who find themselves uh, in this situation and they decide just to, you know, keep their heads down and not do much of anything to combat what happened to their country. Because by the time that we joined the book in 1936, it's too late. The Nazis have assumed complete and total power. So this is a, a terrific historical mystery, uh, a book that really bring, takes you to another place and sort of sinks you into it. And... There's a lot of, uh, there's some violence, some shooting. Bernie gets knocked out a few times. It's all, it all seems like a book that could have been written or a movie that could have been, uh, uh, you know, recorded in the 1950s. So it's very much of the time that it depicts in a way, uh, which I found to be quite enjoyable. So this so March Violets is, is a book that I enjoyed a lot. And if you're a fan of historical mysteries and historical private investigator mysteries, I think this is a must read. And as I said, you can find a link or links in the description below to where you can find uh, the book or the first three books in the series. And I plan to continue reading this series uh, because I enjoyed it as much as I, uh, because as I said, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And I want to, to continue uh, seeing where Bernie's adventures will take him and to learn more about um, Nazi Germany and about uh, the situation in, I believe that the, the rest of the series or later books in the series also, also take place in during the Second World War and even afterward. And, I, and I'm interested to seeing the historical changes that Germany and the territories that it controlled during the Second World War go through as the series progresses. So let me know in the comments if you've read any Bernie Gunther novels and which one you liked the most, but don't tell me anything about the plots because I haven't read any of them apart from the first. And thank you for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.